thank the gentleman. The gentleman from Florida, Mr. Wexler. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Madam Secretary, over the past month, startling revelations have come forward that specifically relate to your conduct prior to 9-11 and in the run-up to the war in Iraq. A recently released study by the nonpartisan Center for Public Integrity revealed that you, along with President Bush and top administration officials, made a total of 935 false public statements in an orchestrated attempt to take this nation to war. Here's a stack of these false statements right here, all 935 of them. Uh, this study has found that you, Madam Secretary, made 56 <coughs> false statements to the American people where you repeatedly pump up the case that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction and exaggerate the so-called relationship between Iraq and al-Qaeda. Uh, Madam Secretary, can you please tell us, isn't it true that you had intelligence that cast doubt on your repeated claims that Iraq did not have weapons of mass destruction? Uh, no, it's not true, Congressman. Uh, with all due respect, I think if you look back at the key judgments of the intelligence estimate about Iraq's weapons of mass destruction, you will see that those judgments supported the views of many intelligence agencies worldwide, the uh, views of the United Nations uh, inspectors, that Iraq must have been hiding something. Uh, our own intelligence estimates said that Iraq had reconstituted its biological weapons program, its chemical weapons program, and the only disagreement was whether or not they had reconstituted their nuclear weapons uh, program, although uh, there were certainly uh, elements, including the CIA, that believed uh, that they were in the process of doing so. Now, uh, Congressman, I take my integrity very seriously. And I did not at any time make a statement that I knew to be false or that I thought to be false in order to pump up anything. Nobody wants to go to war. Saddam Hussein was a threat to this country. We had gone to war against him in 1991. President Clinton had gone to war against him in 1998. We were in a state of war with him. This was a, a cessation of hostilities, not a, an armistice, because let us remember that our pilots were actually flying missions Southern Watch and Northern Watch and being shot at by his, uh, by his air defenses. And so, I'm sorry, Congressman, because you've questioned my integrity. I ask you to let me respond. Now, uh, we have learned that many of the intelligence assessments were wrong. There have been many, many investigations of that, including uh, Senate Select Intelligence and a number of others. And we have gone to extraordinary lengths to reform our intelligence agencies so that they can make better assessments of uh, situations in which you have uh, non-transparent governments that will not answer the just demands of an international community that had sanctioned and had resolutions against Saddam Hussein several times. So no, Congressman, at no time did I intend to or do I believe that I did uh, I, I simply put asked, forward Madam false Secretary, information to the American people. I simply asked if you had intelligence that was contrary to the intelligence that you reported repeatedly to the American Congressman, people I would, that Iraq did have weapons of Congressman, mass Congressman, I would suggest that you go back and read the key judgments of 2002. I think that will answer your question. Yes. The answer to the question, Madam Secretary, is that, in fact, there were contrary reports. You chose to weigh the reports that Congressman, supported your uh, Congressman, no, Congressman, I chose to use, Madam Congressman, Secretary. I chose to use, Congressman, I'm sorry, I'm going to answer this. Congressman, I chose to use what every administration uses, which is the collective wisdom of the intelligence community that is in a national intelligence estimate. I again ask you to go back and read the key judgments from 2002 about the state of Saddam Hussein's weapons programs, and I think you will see that it was the judgment of the intelligence community as a whole that he had reconstituted his biological weapons program, reconstituted his chemical weapons program, and was seeking to do so with his nuclear weapons program, and might do so within a year if he got foreign assistance. That was the collective um, wisdom of the intelligence community, I will be the first to say that it was not right. Madam Secretary, unfortunately, the American people were denied the opportunity to hear the other side. 
you may have rightfully or wrongfully reached your conclusion, but a legitimate question is why weren't the American people told that there was contrary intelligence? Congressman, I am sorry. I sat through the briefings for the Congress and for the Senate done by the intelligence community. Uh, we were there to provide policy advice, but either George Tenet or John McLaughlin or others gave those briefings. And, Congressman, the American people were told what their intelligence community as a whole believed to be the assessment concerning Iraq's programs. I just want to repeat to you that not only was it our intelligence community, there were other intelligence communities that believed the same. Uh, if we didn't believe that, it's very strange that we put Iraq under uh, several um, Security Council resolutions numbering 16 or 17, demanding that Saddam Hussein answer uh, for his weapons of mass destruction programs, that the uh, Resolution 1414, uh, 1441, which was a unanimous resolution of the Security Council saying that he had to answer for his weapons of mass destruction programs, I'd be the first to say the intelligence was not right. And we've gone to great lengths to reorganize it so that we can have better intelligence. But to claim, uh, Congressman, that there were uh, other things that we somehow hid, hid from the American people is simply not right. Well, the, time, the time of the gentleman has expired, and the gentleman from South Carolina... And, uh, and that uh, we will in fact find uh, uh, weapons or, or evidence of weapons programs that are, are conclusive. I don't think we'll discover anything myself. It appears that there were not weapons of mass destruction there. You said you knew where they were. I did not know where they are. They're in the area around uh, Tikrit and Baghdad and, and uh, east, west, south and north. Well, first of all, I, I have it wrong. There are a lot of people who lie and get away with it. Talking about lies and your, your right. allegation that there was bulletproof evidence of ties between Al-Qaeda and Iraq. Was that a lie? Intelligence gathered by this and other governments leaves no doubt that the Iraqi regime continues to possess and conceal some of the most lethal weapons ever devised. The, are people going to find out the truth, and the truth will say that this intelligence is good intelligence, no doubt in my mind. I don't know anybody that I can think of who has contended that the Iraqis had nuclear weapons. And we believe he has, in fact, reconstituted nuclear weapons. Saddam Hussein is determined to get his hands on a nuclear bomb. We cannot wait for the final proof. He's got him. He's got him. The smoking gun. He's got him. That could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. Colin Powell didn't lie. My colleagues, every statement I make today is backed up by sources, solid sources. These are not assertions. What we're giving you are facts and conclusions based on solid intelligence. He has not developed any significant capability with respect to weapons of mass destruction. He is unable to project conventional power against his neighbors. The, are people going to find out the truth? I have not suggested there's a connection between Iraq and 9-11. You have said in the past that it was, quote, pretty well confirmed. No, I never said that. Okay. I, I never think said that, that is... No, absolutely not. What I said was, uh, it's been pretty well confirmed, that he did go to Prague and he did meet with um, a senior official of the Iraqi intelligence service. Saddam Hussein aids and protects terrorists, including members of al-Qaeda. Secretly and without fingerprints, he could provide one of his hidden weapons to terrorists or help them develop their own. What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack on the World Trade Center. Nothing! He said there were three main reasons for going to war in Iraq. Weapons of mass destruction. Saddam Hussein has gone to elaborate lengths, spent enormous sums, taken great risks to build and keep weapons of mass destruction. The claim that Iraq was sponsoring terrorists would have attacked us on 9-11. Before September the 11th, many in the world believed that Saddam Hussein could be contained. And that Iraq had purchased nuclear materials from Niger. The regime is seeking a nuclear bomb. Now, all three of those turned out, turned out to be false. Uh, first, uh, just if I might correct a misperception, I, I don't think we ever said, at least I know I didn't say, that there was a direct connection between September the 11th and, 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 and Saddam Hussein. Who does the president think he's effing kidding? Uh, of course, it was information that was mistaken.
There are a lot of people who lie and get away with it. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> Nope, no weapons over there. <laughs>